Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a great day. My name is Eric and I can't believe it's been a year already because today we are kicking off Celebrate Sausage Season 2 and I'm glad you could join us. Get ready because every day this month we're going to be uploading a brand new video and before we begin I just want you to remember that this is a viewer inspired series. Many of the recipes that we're featuring this year on Celebrate Sausage are from your suggestions and thank you for that. As you work your way through this series, if there's a sausage that you would like to see me make next year, be sure to leave the suggestion in the comment section below. We're going to take the best of the best and put together a season three that's going to knock your socks off. This year, we have got some really cool sponsors who have offered some very generous discounts if you happen to be in the market for sausage making equipment, smokers, cutting boards, knives, all kinds of really great stuff. And speaking of sponsors, this entire series was sponsored by The Sausage Maker. And just so you know, I've been dealing with The Sausage Maker for over 10 years. When I started with those guys, I would get their breakfast sausage bundle kits, their easy to make jerky kits, and as I became more advanced, they had everything I needed to keep me moving along. Everything from grinders, stuffers, vacuum sealers, casings, cures, starter cultures. They literally became a one-stop shop for my charcuterie journey. And for Celebrate Sausage Season 2, the Sausage Maker has been kind enough to extend a discount code. I'm gonna put it in the description box below for those of you watching this series. Their discount code is only valid for 31 days, so starting today through the month of October, if there's anything you need sausage making related, check the description box, click that link, enter the code, and take advantage of their generous offer. Let's get started with Celebrate Sausage Season 2, and today's sausage is Cajun Boudin. Boudin was one of the most requested sausages from last year's Celebrate Sausage, so I thought we'd kick off the season with what happens to be one of my all-time favorite sausage. Now, some of you may or may not know that I grew up in South Louisiana. I'm a Cajun. I am intimately familiar with Boudin. This is a sausage that we ate, without exaggeration, four to five times a week. We had it for breakfast, we had it for lunch, we had it for dinners. It was a dessert, it was a snack, it was served at weddings, at birthdays. This sausage was everywhere. It is a Cajun's comfort food. So what is boudin? Well, boudin is a Cajun rice sausage mixed with a lot of vegetables. It's very flavorful and it's generally made with pork. Although I've seen it made with venison, alligator, shrimp, crawfish, duck, rabbit, nutrat, so the protein that's used in boudin really doesn't matter, but the thing that they all have in common is rice and vegetables. Often you'll find boudin stuffed into a casing. You can have it steamed or smoked. Sometimes they'll roll it into balls and deep fry them. Those are called boudin balls. No matter which way you have it, boudin is delicious. And so what we're gonna do today here on Celebrate Sausage is show you how to make boudin three ways, steamed, smoked, and boudin balls, and the recipe I'm gonna be sharing with you is my personal recipe. Let's make boudin. All right, first thing we wanna do is get our hands on a pork shoulder. This is also known as the Boston butt, and we're going to generously season it with Cajun seasoning, with Creole seasoning, whatever you have. And once it's completely coated, we're gonna take that and place it into the refrigerator for three or four hours. Now, we're gonna take the liver that the recipe calls for and place it into some cool water. This is gonna help clean that liver out, get some of that excess blood out of there. About every 30 minutes or so, change the water out, add fresh water while we prepare our vegetables. As far as the vegetables go, we're gonna go with the classic Cajun foundation, celery, bell pepper, onion, and we're gonna give everything a rough chop. All of this is going to get thrown into a slow cooker and cooked for six, seven hours. So by the time this is done, the vegetables are going to be nice and tender, and there's really no need to do any kind of fine dicing or anything like that. Although you can if you really want to. And finally, we're going to take our green onions, rough chop the bottoms, rough chop the tops. Uh, I am going to leave half of the tops for the very end of this recipe, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. But now that our vegetables are done, we're going to toss all those vegetables into a pot with a little bit of oil, and we're going to turn the heat on a medium, medium high. We've got our celery, bell pepper, onions. I'm going to add a little bit of salt to begin sweating those vegetables. And then we're just going to saute that on a medium high heat until they begin to soften up, at which point we're going to add our minced garlic and half of our green onion tops. 
There we go. All right, our vegetables are cooking. It smells amazing, and we're now gonna get our liver ready. So we're using chicken liver in this recipe. Traditionally, pork liver is used. No matter what liver you end up choosing, you could use beef, chicken, uh, you could use pork for you know a stronger liver flavor. You never wanna get it frozen. When you freeze liver, it just magnifies the flavor and it becomes way too overwhelming. You wanna try to get it as fresh as you can. So I'm just gonna go ahead and chop uh, all that liver up and we're gonna take that chopped liver and throw it into our dish. Let's go ahead and get our pork shoulder ready. So I've taken it out of the fridge. We've got a blazing hot cast iron skillet, a little bit of oil, and we're just gonna give this pork shoulder a little bit of color. This is an optional step, as you can take this pork shoulder and stick it right into the pot with the vegetables, and it'll still be delicious, but browning your meat before you cook it is gonna introduce an entirely new layer of flavor and it's gonna be amazing. So once we get that completely browned on all sides, we're gonna go ahead and take that and stick that into our pot with our vegetables and the hard work is now finished. At this point, we're gonna be adding just enough liquid to cover everything that's in your pot by about an inch. And so I'm gonna come back with some of my favorite chicken stock. And then of course, we're gonna add some salt and the rest of our seasonings, which is pretty simple. We're just gonna do pepper, some Cajun seasoning. You gotta have some cayenne for heat and maybe a little more Cajun seasoning. And that's it, give that a stir. And we're gonna put a lid on this, bring the heat down to a medium, bring it to a simmer, and allow this to cook for four to six hours. And that's really a rough estimate. It really just depends on how big of a piece of pork shoulder you're using. So once it's fall apart tender, it's good to go. While that's cooking, we're gonna prepare some rice and I'm gonna be using parboiled rice for this boudin. You could use whatever rice you like. I like parboiled rice because it tends to hold up a little bit better in the boudin. So once we get our rice to a simmer, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it one more stir, cover it, bring the heat all the way down to a low, and then set a timer for about 25 minutes. This rice came out absolutely brilliant. We're just gonna take it and set that to the side while we check on our pork shoulder. This shoulder has been cooking for about four hours, four and a half hours, and it looks absolutely beautiful. It's like pulled pork at this point, so it's very, very tender. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna separate our solids from our liquids, and I'll show you why here in a second. So all I'm doing is separating everything that's vegetable and pork, and then the juice will just drain into that bowl right there. Now, once we have all the solids taken out of our cooking liquid, I like to go ahead and run them through my grinder. If you don't have a grinder, that's totally okay. You can use a KitchenAid stand mixer with the paddle attachment to finish up this process, and that'll shred your meat really nice. We're gonna go ahead and add the other half of my green onions, as well as all of the parsley that the recipe calls for, and I'm just gonna run that through my grinder. The last step, we want to add our meat mixture with our rice. I personally like to do a one-to-one, -one, so for every cup of meat mixture, I'm adding a cup of rice, but if you wanna go heavier on the rice or heavier on the meat mixture, it's totally up to you. And once you have all your meat and your rice combined, we want to bring in some more of that cooking liquid. And what I like to do is pull my liquid from the top, making sure that I get some of that rendered fat as we add this to our rice and meat mixture. This is going to keep our boudin from drying out. It's gonna add a whole lot of flavor 
and you're just going to have to trust me on this one. It's going to be amazing. So as I'm adding liquid into my meat and rice mixture, I want to do it a little bit at a time. If you add too much liquid, your boudin will become too mushy. If you don't add enough liquid, it's going to be dry and crumbly. So this is where experience comes in. And at this point, go ahead and taste your mix because if you need to add any seasonings, this is a great time to do that. We're just going to go ahead and add a couple handfuls of our Cajun seasoning blend. And you're going to notice that this mix is actually going to start to get pretty sticky. Uh, by the way, your kitchen should smell amazing at this point. And in case you were wondering, yes, most kitchens in South Louisiana will smell just like this every single day. Let me tell you what you're looking for. Grab a little bit of that mixture, roll it into a ball, and it should hold its shape without crumbling or falling apart. And that's what that's going to look like. And just so you know, a printable recipe with adjustable quantities can be found in the description box below. There's going to be a link right there at the top. Click on it. It'll take you to the recipe. And if you have any questions, let me know. We're going to get this into our sausage stuffer using natural hall casings. We're going to go ahead and lube up that horn with a little bit of water. And really, that's all you need. You don't need to get crazy and put oil or anything like that on it. So we're just going to put a little bit of water and we're going to slide that natural hall casing onto it, tie off the end and then stuff our boudin. If you don't have a sausage stuffer and you still wanna make boudin, don't even worry about it. There are lots of ways to use boudin without a casing. Boudin balls, boudin burgers. In South Louisiana, we would have pistolets stuffed with boudin. I could tell you a thousand different ways that we've eaten boudin and only a handful of them were inside of a casing. So you can get pretty creative, you know, stuff your bell peppers with boudin, anyway. Today we're gonna to be making boudin balls. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So here we go. We've got our boudin links ready to go. And being that we're making boudin three ways, we're gonna smoke this batch. So let me tell you how to do that. Now remember, your boudin is already cooked, so we're gonna be applying hot smoke to just allow them to take on that nice smoky flavor. I'm gonna be using my cold smoke generator from Smoking It. And we're using a little pecan, a little hickory, and we're just going to get that thing fired up. If you don't have a cold smoke generator from Smoke It, check out the link in the description box below. These things are awesome. Our temperature is at 225 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're going to let that cook for about an hour and a half. After an hour and a half, we're going to open up that door and we're going to rub that boudin down with a little olive oil. This is optional, but I like the way it crisps up that hog casing. It gives you a nice bite when you bite into it. So once we get that totally coated with just a little layer of olive oil. We're gonna close that door and continue to cook for an hour and a half. Total cook time is three hours, and really it just comes down to how smoky you like your boudin. If you just like a kiss of smoke, then you can leave it in there for about an hour and that would be totally fine. So this is now finished, ready to eat. Let me show you way number two on how to prepare boudin and eat it. This is gonna be steamed. So we've got a pot of boiling water, we're gonna place a little steamer basket right in there and we're gonna steam this for about 10 or 15 minutes. While that's steaming, let's make some boudin balls. We've got a third of a cup of our boudin mixture. We're gonna roll it around in some flour. I'm then going to dip that into an egg wash mixture and then coat it with panko breadcrumbs. And the end result is gonna look like this. That is a panko coated ball of boudin. We're gonna set that into some oil. Oil temp is 350 degrees, and we're just gonna cook that until that outer layer gets nice and golden brown. They're gonna crisp up when they cool down. And so here's our boudin. They look absolutely amazing. This is probably one of my favorite ways to eat it. And there we go. I've got my boudin balls, my smoked boudin, and my steamed boudin. And I think it's time to give this a little taste. Let's start with the boudin balls. Okay, the boudin ball. This is a great way to eat boudin. You don't need a sausage stuffer. You just put a little egg wash, some panko breadcrumbs, and you got a nice crispy shell on it. And let's see here. Ooh, that smells wonderful. It brings back great memories for me when I was younger. All right, let's just take some of this off here. I don't want to make a mess. That's nice and hot. Oh, look at that. Here we go. It's... Mm-hmm. That's hot. <laughs> That's delicious. It's not too spicy. The liver isn't overwhelming. It's got great flavor, great texture. Sometimes we put a little bit of sauce on it, but I'll eat it just like that. 
I don't want to make a mess here. I'm going to take another bite, though. That's so good. Ah, can you see that? It's just piping hot. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm. Ooh, that's good. That's the boudin ball. I'm going to get back to that. And this is our smoked boudin. Now, notice the casing. Nice color. It's actually crisped up quite a bit. And so when it comes to smoked boudin, typically you could put this in a, you know, a bun if you want. We would just eat it by itself, just like that, until we take a bite. Mm. That is so good. Smoky, a little spicy, and although the filling is exactly the same, that smoke really adds a whole other dimension of flavor. And in my opinion, absolute best way to eat boudin is smoke it, but not everybody likes that, which is why there's so many different varieties and, and versions of boudin. So, Personally, I like it smoked. This is delicious. Mm. I don't want to get full. So we're going to now eat the steamed boudin. Now notice the casing on this, a lot lighter. See that? And because we steamed it, the casing is actually going to be rubberier. So it's not really intended to be eaten. This is really more of a housing for the stuffing. So there's a couple ways that you can eat boudin like this. One way is to just cut it open and with a spoon or a fork, scoop out the filling and enjoy the boudin that way. I've seen lots of tourists on the boudin trail eat boudin that way. That's not really how the locals eat it. How the locals eat boudin that's been steamed is they make sure that one of the tips has been removed so that it's open and very simply squeeze it out like a tube of toothpaste. Here it comes. Look at that. There it goes. And then just bite it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm. It ain't the prettiest way, but it sure is tasty. And so, you know what? Let me get another bite. Man, that's good. I still prefer it smoked, though, hands down. Still prefer it smoked, but this is just as good. Mm. Totally different eating experience steamed versus smoked versus boudin balls. I say give all three a go. In the comment section below, you let me know which one you like the best because I hope you get a chance to try this recipe. Don't forget you can find the recipe for this boudin in the description box below and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. If you found this video to be helpful or entertaining, smash that like button. And if this is the first video that you've seen from our channel, we'd like to say welcome. You really caught us at a good time because we are in the middle of a daily upload through the month of October for Celebrate Sausage Season 2. I don't want you to miss a single upload, so take a moment, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified of every new video that we post. We want to thank The Sausage Maker for sponsoring this series, and you can find their coupon code in the description box below as well. Thanks for being here. We'll see you tomorrow.